There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, a boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Before we start talking about this video in more detail, we need to go over a really important term. That important term is called rate of reaction. Now, what is rate of reaction? Rate of reaction is basically how many reactions are there per second. So, how many reactions per second? And again, what is a reaction? So, for example, a reaction would be this. We have nitrogen plus three moles of hydrogen gas combined to form one mole of ammonium, ammonia, sorry. And this is one reaction. So if these combine to form this, this would be one reaction. So if I ask, now, what is the rate of reaction of this reaction? I would be asking, how many times per second does, it, does this happen? And what's important to know is this right here. This graph shows you basically something called the activation energy. And this activation energy needs to be overcome for the reaction to occur. What I mean by that is, for example, let's say with this here, so we've got energy on the one side here. This is how much energy we need to have and time on the other side. So for this reaction to, to happen, we need to basically go over that hill. We need to get over that hill in terms of energy for the reaction to happen, for the product to be formed. So if we're, for example, here, let's say we're here. This might be room temperature. So what does that mean? If we are here, we are not over the hill. What does that mean? What that means is here we have, these are the sort of legend here. We've got nitrogen as the orange, hydrogen as the green, and ammonia as the sort of combined one. If we have a low temperature, what that, the problem with low temperature, what that means is it will move too, far, too slow. It won't have enough energy, right? Energy is basically temperature. Low energy means low temperature. And even if they collide, even if they sort of hit each other, which has to happen in terms of there to be a chance to produce ammonia, three of these hydrogens, which I'm having in my hand here, have to hit one of the nitrogen for a reaction to occur. But the problem is, even if they do occur, there's a chance if the energy isn't high enough, if it's not moving it fast enough, that nothing happens. So uh, the example I could give would be if, for example, you move at, you know, you're driving a car and you hit a, an actual building, but you're driving, let's say, at 20k per hour, what's going to happen to a building? Even though you hit the building, nothing much happens. There's no reaction. Right? Whereas if you're driving, let's say, you're driving 100k per hour, like this car driver might have done, and you hit the same building, you might actually make a pretty big dent because you've actually just, you have much more energy, which means you can actually make that happen, right? Whereas the other one just didn't happen. So what I was trying to show you here is just exactly what happens when it comes to energy. We need to have high amounts of energy for a reaction to happen. We have, if we have nitrogen and three moles of, so three moles of hydrogen and one mole of nitrogen at room temperature, nothing might happen. We might not have enough energy. But if we increase the energy, so if we increase the energy, then we can go over that hill, right, that, that hill of energy that we need to go over. And as soon as we, we pass that hill, we have made the reaction happen. So an increase in energy is basically the same thing as an increase in temperature. Right? So we need to increase our temperature to increase the energy at which these are moving at. Right? And high energy means they're moving really fast. So if you give it high temperatures, that's the same as high energy, and that means they're going to move quite fast. Which means even when they do collide, it's going to be a strong collision and a chance of a new reactant being formed is quite high. And why do I mention all this? Because the actual dot point itself says explain why the rate of reaction is increased by higher temperatures. Right? So the, that rate of reaction is how many reactions there are per second. And we now need to talk about why temperature does, any, does something when it comes to the rate of reaction. It has to do with this activation energy, which I mentioned just here. Right, so here this is again, this is the actual activation energy for the Haber process. And activation energy is basically just the energy required. So the activation energy is the energy required to make the reaction happen. Right, so that is the definition of activation energy, more or less. 
the energy required to make the reaction happen. In this case, it's this much, right? So we need to have this much more than normal. That's our EA, our activation energy, for these reactants. So the nitrogen and hydrogen gas to form our products, which is in this case ammonia. So by increasing temperature, what that means is here we have again the legend means these double ones where we have two. So what I'm holding in my hand here, this is nitrogen gas and this is hydrogen gas. We want them to collide in the correct ratios to form this, which is ammonia, which is our product that we want. And so what, what will happen first is we're going to have, if we have high enough temperatures, we're going to be able to cross that mountain, right? Because now high enough energy means, uh, high enough temperature means we're going to have more energy in our actual molecules, which means we're going to cross that mountain, which means they're going to break apart. These bonds will break. And what will happen? Well, the chance of them colliding and then forming ammonia has increased because they're going to move quite fast. And when they do collide, it's going to stick. Right? So they're going to stick and they're not going to be able to just bounce off each other. Whereas if it's low temperature, so they might even hit each other, but nothing might happen. And so if, if three of these hydrogen meet one of these hydrogen, then we have a ammonia being formed. Now, one thing that, I mean, high temperatures, which we usually have, remember we have about relatively high, not too high, but relatively high, we have about, about 500 degrees Celsius for the harbor process, so this here. But remember the one downside, which we'll talk about more in the next video, is that if we have 500 degrees Celsius, because this reaction is actually exothermic, what that means, it's going to shift more to the left-hand side. And by shifting more to the left-hand side, What's going to happen is we're actually going to have more of these which have formed breaking back into the original elements, right? So we have ammonia here, and because of this increase in temperature, it's going to shift to the left, and some of them will break apart again and reform the original reactants. So in this case, it's going to reform, some of them will reform hydrogen nitrogen gas. Basically, the idea of this is, you, if you have a choice, let's say, if we have room temperature, right, so at 25 degrees Celsius, because we have a lower rate of reaction, they move quite slow. What that means is we might only have one reaction per second. Right? So let's say that, one reaction per second is just sort of an example. So we have one reaction per second, but this reaction will stay, so 100% of that reaction will stay and still be um, sorry, still be ammonia, right? So we have a 100% ammonia conversion rate, which is good, as we want. We only have one reaction per second. Whereas if, for example, we have 500 degrees Celsius, what that might mean is instead of having one, because now they move faster, we have, let's say, 10 reactions per second. So it's gone up quite significantly. The problem is, from those 10 reactions that happen per second, only about 50% actually stay the course. The other 50% will break back into its reactants, back into a more, uh, nitrogen and hydrogen. But overall, even if that happens, we would still have more, we would still have more ammonia this way, right? Because 10 reactions, 50% breaking um, back into the reactants, but 50% staying means we have sort of five moles of ammonia. Whereas the example above, even though all of them stay, we only have one reaction, which really means one would only have one mole of ammonia. That's kind of why we have high temperatures, to increase the rate of reaction. And even though that higher temperature means that some will break apart again, overall, it's still be we're still better off. Right? But I'll go over that more in the next video. For this video, for this dot point, what you need to know is that by having a higher rate of reaction, what that means is we increase our, sorry, I've just confused myself, by having, by having a higher temperature, what that means is they, they're going to move faster. These molecules are going to move faster, which means there's a higher chance of this activation energy being overcome, right, this activation energy over here. And if it is overcome, that means the reaction will go ahead. If it, it's not overcome, the reaction won't go ahead. So the higher our temperature, the higher our rate of reaction. So the more of these reactions will actually occur. 
and the next part we'll cover in the next video. Thank you for watching.